Every single day, 100,000 songs are uploaded to Spotify. And it is said by the end of 2024, it will be more likely to be 200,000 songs released every single day. Now, every single artist releasing and every single record label wants exactly the same goal. They want to get their music heard as many times as possible. They want to build up all of those plays. But the difference that separates the successful releases and the failures is implementation. If I asked you what is the most important aspect to your music release, most artists would probably say, well, the music. The music is the most important thing. I disagree. I know this sounds crazy, but... I think mindset is the most important thing because releasing a song, obviously the music needs to be good, but if you're going to have a career at this, you're probably going to be releasing many, many songs, which means your mindset has to be in the right place. If you use the example of away from music and in professional sport, maybe as an athlete, maybe as a professional swimmer, if you want to win Olympic gold as a swimmer, then of course you have to be the fastest swimmer. But it is the mindset that takes you all of those years of practice and dedication to be able to build up to become the fastest swimmer and win that Olympic gold. So therefore, this isn't an accident. No one jumps into a pool splashes around and goes, what do you know? I'm the fastest swimmer on earth. So your mindset is key when it comes to your music release, or more importantly, when it comes to being successful. You see, talent, I mean, talent can be honed and, and technique and songwriting, well, you can practice and you can improve those things. Production value, I mean, you can buy good production value, but mindset, mindset is what drives winners. So come with me on a journey, okay? The year is 1965. Dubai is a small fishing village with a population of around about 40,000 people. Now, in 1966, they strike oil, and all of a sudden, Dubai becomes a mega-rich territory, at which point... Sheikh Rashid, who is the ruler of Dubai, says, look, this oil is going to run out. And if we want to make this generational wealth over a period of not just decades, but centuries, we have to go further than oil and we have to do something different. And everyone says, that is big thinking. That's really, really clever. Have you got any ideas? And Sheikh Rashid says, yes, tourism. And they say, what? And he goes, tourism is what's going to happen. That's how we're going to build Dubai into this great, amazing place that everyone's going to want to come and visit. And someone goes, without disrespect, but this is the desert. And that means that we live in a place which is 50 degrees Celsius, which is 125 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's mostly sand and no offense, but this is not a holiday destination. And he says, you will see. And do you know what? He was right. And why? It's because he used these nine lessons in mindset that him and then later on his son went on to make Dubai one of the most visited cities on the face of the planet. So if you want to develop a strong mindset that allows you not only to be successful and to win, but also to make sure that you know how to get the most out of your music release, then check out these nine lessons. And the first lesson when it comes to mindset is time. When it came to building Dubai, Sheikh Rashid didn't think in weeks or months or even years. He went straight for decades. What are we going to be able to build in the next 10 years? And once he had put everything in and built something over the 10 years, he said, right, what are we going to be able to build in the next 10 years? So everything was in blocks of 10 years. Now, artists don't do that. What artists tend to do is they tend to think in terms of music releases, which is a single, which let's face it, could be four to six weeks with probably one to two weeks worth of promotion. And then they go, what are we going to do now? We have to start all over again. Now, that doesn't allow for momentum. Whereas if we have a mindset that is thinking in terms of long, big, periods of time, then we are not rushing. You see, the thing with rushing is rushing makes average songs. Rushing makes average content. Rushing builds 
average relationships. So we don't want to rush. What we want to do is we want to build towards something incredible. If you make average stuff, then people will remember you for making average stuff. And that means when it comes to your second, your third, your fourth, your fifth release, they'll be thinking about the other releases that they have already seen and saying, oh, I'm already judging you for what I've seen in the past, which are average releases, average content. So therefore, I'm not going to give you the same time as you would like because I am judging you on what we have already seen. We live in a time where we are expecting people to give us a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh chance because of socials. We're saying, I know you've seen me before and I know that really didn't strike a chord, but I'm going to try again and I'm going to try again and I'm going to try again. The problem is, is people are seeing us and saying, no, I've already seen you. I've already judged you. And therefore the power is in my finger. I've seen you and there you are and there you've gone. So we're saying, I know, but give me that second chance. Give me that fifth chance. Give me that 10th chance. In doing so, it makes it a lot easier if we make a very good first impression, if we make a very good second impression, if we make a very good third, fourth, fifth impression. Now, whilst I'm not expecting you to think in terms of 10 years, although I don't think that's a bad idea, I very much do expect you to be thinking in terms of at least 12, if not 24 months. You can plan your singles, you can plan your tours, you can plan your promo, you can plan your socials 12 to 24 months in advance. And if you're planning a week or even worse than that, 24 hours in advance, then probably you are not building something of substance. You are building something that is average. Now, number two is to have a vision. When it came to building Dubai, Sheikh Rashid had a vision of making the greatest city on earth, even though he knew that this was a desert and it was so hot that in the summer you couldn't go outside. So he said, well, in which case, I've got to have a vision that works that I can build towards to build the greatest city that's ever been. Now, when it comes to you as an artist, you are not thinking about your vision being releasing music because that's that's an action. Your vision is not about building Spotify numbers because now that's an outcome. What your vision might be is to have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of adoring fans who come and see you on tour. Now, that is a vision that you can visualize and work towards. In Dubai's case, it was to be the greatest city on earth. Now, with your vision comes great actions. So for example, if you said, nah, I just want to, I just want to place a pub and I just want a hundred people to turn up, then you have to act accordingly. But if you want your vision to be something great, legacy that people will talk about and remember and, and act upon for years, if not decades to come, then you have to put those actions in. If you want to change the world, posting two TikToks a week is probably not going to fulfill the requirement for you to be getting the success that you want. So what is your vision? I would love to know what your specific vision is in the comments below because I think everyone's vision is different and I don't think there's a one size fits all. But having that vision allows you to go to the end and work backwards. Every decision that you're making, you're thinking, is this taking me closer to my end goal vision? Now, when it comes to lesson number three, it's all about thinking bigger. Now, Nobody thinks bigger than Dubai. When it comes to a city that has been built on the biggest, the best, the fastest, the most, if it hasn't got some kind of superlative on the start of it, then Dubai are not interested. They are saying, if we are going to compete on a level with some of the greatest cities all over the world that have got all of the tradition and all of the history, then we have to do something unbelievable and think bigger. And that's exactly what they did. Think about these for some of the the world records for one place on earth. They have the largest building in the world. They have the largest shopping center uh, in the world. They've got the largest picture frame on earth. They have the largest choreographed fountain system. They have the largest indoor skiing resort in the desert. They have the largest man-made, uh, man-made island, the largest firework display, the largest 3D printing bu- printed building. They have the largest flower arrangement. They have the lo- longest dry metro. They have the tallest hotel and my personal favorite, the largest cup of hot tea. 
when they are doing something, they say, I can't just build buildings. I can't just build a hotel. I can't just build a building. I have to build something that everyone is going to talk about. Now, when most artists are thinking about promotion, they're thinking about what's the least amount I can do to promote my music. What is the smallest action that will get me the most reward? And Dubai aren't doing that. Dubai are saying, no, 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 I understand. I get it. Everyone's competing, and so therefore I have to go over and above everyone else. I have to take pride, and I have to make sure everyone else says, no, forget everyone else, I'm coming here. And that's because they have great actions and because they think bigger. Now, there is a phrase. Every time you make a piece of content, every time you're making an EPK, making a website, you're writing a press release, you're sending um, a, a playlist pitch, if you think about this phrase, can you imagine if... Right now, if you put that when you are designing anything, that will stand you in good stead. For example, if you said, I'm going to make some new content, right? Can you imagine if I walk down the street singing my song? People will go, yeah, I can. Yeah, I see every day. Yeah, I can imagine that. Whereas if you said, can you imagine if I stood on the tallest building in our city, holding a snake, playing guitar, rocking out to our new song? I'm like, oh, that sounds quite, yeah, I, I can kind of imagine. I'd like to see that. It's a big, big difference between you saying, can you imagine if, and then coming up with something that people go, oh, that sounds really, really good. So when it comes to everything you do, if you want to think bigger, you need to think like Dubai. Can you imagine if we had the tallest building in the world? Oh, that sounds good. I'd like to see that. Can you imagine if we had the the largest shopping mall in the whole world? Oh, yeah, that sounds good. I'd like to see that. All of a sudden, we are thinking bigger with our actions. Now, number four in our mindset lesson is being relentless, which I think is actually probably the toughest one on this list. I think it's pretty easy to be consistent and average. I also think most people can tense the muscle and doing something special, but that probably takes them out of the game for the next six to nine months. What Dubai have done is they say, we've got to make something completely and utterly remarkable. And as soon as we've completed it, we just move on to the next completely, utterly remarkable thing. And we get up and we go again. We're still going to think bigger than everyone else. We're still going to work towards our vision. But now we're going to do something incredible, get up and go again. Now, that's really tough. You know, we're not saying just be consistent and make more content or release more songs. We're saying do something that is incredible and then wake up and go again. Now, if we're looking at how we do that, some tips, for example, are developing routine. I'm a big fan of routine. I live by the calendar. I think calendars are so important. Whenever I'm working with artists that are successful, I usually see routine. I usually see a calendar where you can fit as many things in as possible. If you don't have a calendar, one of the things I notice is time just goes back freely. And, and artists and creatives say this, oh, I need to have my time free so I can be inspired. But successful people say, no, I'll, I'll be inspired and I will find those that inspiration. But what I am going to do is I'm going to make sure I'm getting shit done. So therefore, removing distractions, surrounding yourself with amazing people, rewarding your achievements, all of these things are setting yourself up to succeed rather than setting yourself up to fail. Number five is something we've already mentioned three or four times, but it has its own mindset lesson, which is being remarkable. Now, we're not just thinking bigger. We have to be remarkable. Don't forget, you are not like everyone else. There's eight and a half, nine billion people on the face of the planet, but you are a hero. You are an artist. You stand up and say, this is who I am. This is the music I love. This is what I stand for. Who is with me? And you have a lot of people that say, I believe in you. I love what you do. I am with you. Now, that means you are the hero. You are not average, which means we have to not only think big, but we have to be remarkable. We have to do remarkable. What you wear, what you do, how you do it. When you walk into a room, does everyone stop and say, who's that? And if not, this is something we can work on. This is mindset number 101 that we can say, hang on, I can make myself the hero. I can make something special so that people believe in me more. But if I look out the window and say, I'm just like all of these people, the problem is, as a hero, you are Clark Kent. You are not Superman. You are Clark Kent. And the problem is, is nobody cares about Clark Kent. 
everybody cares about Superman. And you might say, well, oh, they're one and the same. Ah, no, they're not. Because when Clark Kent's wandering around, nobody gives a shit. But when he's zipping around the galaxy with his underpants on the outside, everyone gives a shit. So you have to be the hero. Everything you do, everything you say, everything you wear, every prop, every decision you make has to be remarkable. You are not average. Number six is something I'm going to be banging on a lot about this year, and that is collaborations. Now, it's very difficult to find successful people, or in this case, successful cities, which have been built completely on their own without help from outside. And collaborations in 2024 is going to be absolutely crucial to speed up your growth, to speed up the attention that you are going to get on you as an artist and your music. And what makes it even better is it's completely free. Now, I've been talking about collaborations for years. Why is it any different? Well, I'll tell you, because going into this, year, we know that there's going to be cost of living crisis. We know there's going to be financial problems. We know there's going to be issues when it comes to um, living and being able to afford what you do. And in times of war, everyone looks around and brings their friends in close. Now, this is exactly what you need to do as an artist. You're not saying, this is me and me on my own. Why? Let's make this easier. Let's go and find people who can help us grow and we can help them grow. Now, when it comes to collaborations, it's the easiest thing in the world. If you're releasing a single, you say, do us a favor, pop over to my place and sing on some vocals for me. And then you can either give them the stems of your track and say, can you go and re record verse two? so we can do some content together or you could say just put some harmonies over it and we'll do some pieces of content together now this brings your your new single some more life 10 15 20 days down the line where you just go hey i'm just doing the same single but now i've got a featured artist on it whoever's your friend or someone that you get on really well with or someone you just appreciate your talent and the best thing is you don't have to do that once you can do it 10 times because this is social media you can be like do you fancy coming and singing on my track hey do you fancy coming and singing on my track we've already done it so who cares let's do it again it's just one day it's like fish and chip paper. It's like newspaper, fish and chip paper. On to the next thing, on to the next thing, on to the next thing. Now, collabs is the fastest way to help you grow because when you do a, some kind of collab with another artist, they're going to put that on their socials. You're going to put that on your socials. You're looking after their audience. They're looking after your audience. It is a match made in heaven and it is the easiest way to grow, and I still don't understand why the ego of so many artists don't allow them to do the simplest thing possible, which is bring more people onto your tracks. Make sure that you are buying into other people's audience the way that they will buy into you. These are accelerators. These are boosting your credibility and boosting your attention. Don't forget, when it comes to collaborating, it doesn't just necessarily need to be around your single. It could be singing, but it could also be writing with other artists. It could be making content with other content creators. It could be performing with other artists or performing live with other bands. It could be working with brands. All of this is saying, why am I doing all of the heavy lifting myself when we can spread the load amongst us. Number seven is investment. Now, I know there's people watching this video getting really angry and they have completely missed the point because they're saying, yeah, well, you're talking about Dubai and they struck oil. They had all of the money in the first place. That's the same as an artist who's just given loads and loads of money to go and promote their music. Maybe, but I think that's missing the point. Because what Dubai did is they could have said, oh, we've got some money. We don't need to do this. They invested and reinvested and reinvested and reinvested. They are spending the money to build something that will bring them in even more money. That's reinvesting. It's very, very smart. Now, as an artist, you're not. I'm not expecting you to have millions and millions of dollars or billions of dollars in the case of, of Dubai. But what I am expecting you to do is reinvest small amounts of money into the promotion and the artistry of what you're doing. If you're going to spend money on a really good mix, on a really good master, on a really good studio, then what you should be also looking at is how are you going to make the best content? How are you going to make sure you're getting that attention? And sometimes that call, uh, calls for small amount of money, small amounts of money. But if you're spending those small amounts of money and it's growing and it's pushing you to the next level, then you should be able to bring more money in so that you 
you can reinvest. That's what we talk about a lot in DK MBA. How can you actually start making money? I was with an artist earlier on and we were having a chat. I was like, you're leaving so much money on the table. And it's so frustrating because you're thinking of Spotify and Spotify is an outcome. And I totally understand that you want your Spotify plays. But at the same point, I'm telling you that you could go and make an extra three, four, five grand a month. And if you take one grand of that and then put it into better promotion and better marketing, then you're going to get those that outcome. You're going to get those Spotify numbers and then it will be a recurring loop, but you're leaving stuff on the table. And so when it comes to this, investment is key. You have to make yourself look as good as possible. You have to make yourself sound as good as possible. Production does cost money. Clothes, they do cost money. When you're promoting, it does cost money. So therefore, you need to learn about reinvesting and how you're going to use this to be able to bring money out of your music. Because if you're doing this well enough, you should be able to build the audience and monetize and scale. Number eight is sweating the small stuff or a phrase genius is in the attention to detail. When it comes to Dubai, they understand that this has to be an experience for other people because they have so many more options. So therefore, if you've been to Dubai, there's no litter. It smells amazing. You know, when you go to New York and you're like, it stinks, it stinks. And when you go to Dubai, you're like, oh, it smells lovely, it smells amazing. It's safe. It's fun. They sweat the small stuff to make the experience feel as good as possible. They want you to love it. They want you to come back. And when you look at cities like, you know, London, or where, where I lived for a while, or, or New York, there's a sense of entitlement. It's like, yeah, live here if you want, don't live here, I don't care. Whereas Dubai is saying, I have to make this as good as possible. And that's why it grows so fast. Because people say, this is great. I want more. I want to come back. Now flip that into your socials. Flip that into your release. Instead of it being about you, make it about me, the listener. Make it about me, the consumer. Because if I'm enjoying it, if I want to come back for more, that makes it a lot easier for you. But most artists don't think like that. They say, this is my release. I'll do what I want to do. I'll release the songs when I want to, how I want to. I'll make content the way I want to. And of course, people go, well, it's fine. I'm just not interested. And now, whoop, that's all I have to do. And you're gone. So therefore, we have to make this about experience. We have to sweat the small stuff. We have to make sure that this is about the consumer or the person listening and the fan instead of about you, the artist. And number nine is self-belief, which is very difficult for artists because of the anxiety, because of the overthinking, because of the constant feeling that everything's falling apart at all times. But when it comes to someone like Dubai, they have self-belief because they built the foundation. They built the infrastructure and because they've seen it work. So therefore, they understand that this is working. They're building the momentum. And so what we've got to do is we've got to start small. We have to start building a bit of momentum. It's like riding a bike. You get on a bike, you put your foot on the pedal and you push your pedal down. You start going forward. Now, if you don't start putting, putting your pedal, uh, putting your foot on the other pedal and going forward, you're going to fall off. But if you do, slowly you start picking up speed. This starts to make sense. We have to think of your music release as the same thing. We're not thinking of one music release. We're thinking of five or six or seven or 10 or 12. And we're thinking about how one goes into the second, goes into the third. We're thinking about how we're going to pick up momentum. We're thinking about how we're going to look after people. If we're thinking about all of the mindset lessons that we've been doing over the last you know, 30, 40 minutes that we've been talking, we start to see what is working. And if it starts to work, that's what gives you belief. Even if you're still full of anxiety, even if you still are overthinking, at least you can see the momentum and you can see the progression. And nothing makes you feel like doing that extra piece of content or that extra release or that extra gig rather than something that's working. If you've got that progress, if you've got that momentum, you will get up, you will go again. Self-belief comes from practice. It comes from experience. It comes from seeing growth. It comes from feeling that the the vision is being recognized. And most artists are thinking about their career in terms of a smash and grab, like a lottery. Oh, if only I could just get discovered. Or if this song just happened to get picked up on a, a playlist, then all of a sudden all my dreams come true. We don't need to think like that. What we have to do is we have to believe that this will work over a long period of time and we have to put in the work. We have to believe in ourselves that if we have got that talent and if we haven't, we can learn it. If we've got 
got the talent and if we are consistent and if we are remarkable and if we do all of the mindset lessons that we've just been talking about, then we can build that momentum and the momentum is what gives you that self-belief. So over the next couple of weeks, I have some big videos all about you know 2024, what's changed, what you can do strategy-wise in order to get the most out of your music career and your music release. But I promise you, nothing Nothing is more important than this video because those mindset lessons are what's going to allow you to improve, to practice, to get up, to go again, to think big, to all of the things that we've just been discussing. So I want to know from you, what is your biggest achievement that you would like to see in 2024 this year? I want to know in the comments below. Tell me, what is it that you want to achieve in 2024? And more importantly, what are you going to do differently that you did last year? What are you going to do that is going to move the needle? What have you learned from 2023 that you could push into 2024. Let's get stuck in. Let's have an amazing year together and uh, I will see you on the next one.